Hello, in today's video, we'll be painting the valve covers on this Trans Am. Same valve covers you'll find on any LS engine, but this procedure will work the same for most any other valve cover. I was in the middle of replacing the spark plugs, and at that moment, I decided I may as well replace the valve cover gasket, but then during that part of it, I decided I may as well clean them and paint them, putting us where we're currently at. So after removing both of them, we got both our valve covers in front of us. They're both pretty filthy. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean them starting off by removing any bolts and the center grommets in this case. Following that up by removing these old valve cover gaskets since we won't be reusing these. For this first step, I'll be using brake cleaner with a brush, but the greaser will work just as well. Right now we're just trying to clean off the heavy gunk. So we'll spray it first, followed by using the brush to loosen up the really stuck on stuff. Now that we got most of it loosened up, I'll give it another spray, following that up by going over it once more with the brush. and then we'll wipe it down with a rag. Now to get into those crevices and also scuff the valve cover in the process, we'll use a piece of gray scotch right pad. Big improvement, but we're not done yet. For this next step, we'll be using isopropyl alcohol. We perform this step to remove any oils from the surface because any oils or fingerprints will keep the paint from sticking. So using a clean rag while we wear gloves, we'll wipe the whole valve cover down with the isopropyl alcohol. Well that looks pretty good to me, now we just repeat on the other valve cover, but I don't think I gotta show that one. With both our valve covers prepared, time to mask off what we don't want to get paint on. For this I'll be using this blue painters tape, cause it won't leave any residue, and it won't be too hard to get off after. So what I did was mask off any bolt holes, cause I didn't want to get any paint on the threads, also the coil pack brackets mount to these covers, so I wanted to keep those mounting surfaces free of paint. Then I used some new extra bushings I had, to mask off the center holes. Then masking off any other things like the grommet, the PCV tube where the hoses connect to, the oil fill tube, and the cap. One tip when you're masking these holes, what I do is I cut a piece of tape, and I place it on them. And then I use a wrench or something similar, and I go around the top edge. And that'll turn the tape up really good and pretty quick. Now just remove the outer piece, and we can repeat this for the rest. Before painting, you'll want to make sure to wear a paint mask to protect yourself from the paint fumes. Well now that our valve covers are prepared, masked and ready for paint, we'll get our paint can ready. I decided to go with this black wrinkle paint. I would have painted them red, but there wouldn't be enough red in the compartment to look good. At least that's what I think. So I went with black. And before using a rattle spray can, you'll want to shake the spray can for a few minutes. The reason for this is that the little ball bearing you hear inside helps mix up the product and the propellant into fine droplets. So this way it'll spray in a fine even mist. Normally you'd think of painting them with a primer first, but engine parts are made of a more porous material like cast iron or cast aluminum in this case, so paint doesn't really have a problem sticking to these surfaces as long as they're prepared properly, which we just did. Now if it was a surface like the body of a car, on those you definitely need a primer before paint. 
Also, I have tried wrinkle paint before, and when I used primer, it didn't quite wrinkle as well. Whether you decide to paint primer before or not, whatever paint you choose to go with, you want to make sure it's a high temp paint or engine paint, if not the paint won't last. Well let's go ahead and get started. The valve covers I lay them out on top of cardboard, making sure to paint away from vehicles or anything that you don't want to get overspray on. Whenever you're painting with this wrinkle paint, you want it to be sunny and pretty warm temperature outside, and you want to try painting them in the morning or in the afternoon. I'm painting them here at around 11 a.m., so that'll give it at least 6 hours in the sun before it starts going down. Good enough time to cause a wrinkle effect and allow for a dry time. When spraying paint, you'll want to do a sweepy motion, yet don't want to focus on a single area because the paint will saturate the area and create a run. So with this wrinkle paint, we'll do three heavy coats in a crosshatch pattern, meaning our first coat will be sprayed vertically or up and down, followed by the second horizontally, and our third one will be diagonally. With our first coat done, which was done mostly vertically, we'll give it 10 minutes to dry before we do our second coat. Now for the second coat, we'll be focused mostly on painting it horizontally, trying to make sure you get good coverage all around. Once again, waiting another 10 minutes between the second and the third coat. Now for our third and final coat. This one will be done diagonally, which I probably end up free spraying anyways, making sure I get good coverage over most of it. With the third coat done, let's now get these valve covers out into the sun to dry. This will be a very slow drying paint, so it won't wrinkle right away. It'll take at least an hour for it to be noticeable, unless it's very warm outside. And this is now the valve covers after an hour in the sun. As you can see, it's got a really good wrinkle effect going on already. And here we are after two, even more noticeable wrinkles than the last hour. Well, after three hours or so, I decided to remove the masking tape, but if I were to do it again, I'd probably just wait till it fully dries. Now with all the masking tape off, I say it came out really good. Now the only thing left to do is seeing how they look mounted on the engine. That's definitely the look I was going for. And with that we end this video. I hope it was helpful and informative. If so please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.